I have led a very full life. There are many stories for me to tell. Some funny, some scary, some warm, some chill to the bone. I know there will be questions asked. Now I face them. Hi, hi. <laughs> hi, I'm Debbie Harry. I'm here with you on French 24. Uh, it's a very rainy day over here. I hope it's beautiful where you are. And um, today we're talking about my book, Face It. Um, and it's been translated into French, which I'm very, very happy about, very proud. Hanging out with Andy Warhol, taking drugs, being flashed by David Bowie, having her house taken by the tax collector, all while becoming a trailblazing rock star. They're just some of the stories in this long-awaited memoir from the Blondie singer being translated into French. It dates from her adoption age three months up to the recent 2017 album Pollinator, the band has just announced a UK Against the Odds tour for November 2021. Debbie Harry, hello. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. How is it going? How have you been coping with the pandemic? Uh, well, it varies. So today I'm not coping with it very well, so I'm glad I'm talking to you. I think I'm uh, a little bit, you know, fed up with it all and coupled with the fact of, you know, the disturbing uh, political situation here. There's not much of a comfort zone, you know? There is a lot of change and a lot of things going on in the United States um, at the moment. During the election campaign, you reunited with the Gregory brothers to songify the Mike Pence and um, Kamala Harris debate. you encourage people to vote as well? Vote. Vote for vote. What's yes. your reaction to the result? Um, I'm very happy. I'm very happy that we'll have a, a new president and, uh, you know, get away from this self-promoting egomaniac. <laughs> and we're talking today about your autobiography, Face It, which is coming out in French. Um, 50 years of career, 11 Blondie albums, five solo albums, and 50 million records sold. And were there lots of things that you'd forgotten when you went back to write this book? Yes, and I, I still think that I would like to remember more. I've been in music and, and you know, touring for so many years that I think it's it's uh, very difficult, and and I've never I've never kept diaries. You seem so powerful, in control, fearless. Did you feel like that at the time? No, out of control and fearless is probably <laughs> better, closer to the truth, because um, uh, I seem to uh, I seem to thrive on the danger and the excitement. Blondie was created um, as a character. You always sang from the male perspective. You say in the book that you see Blondie as a transsexual character in retrospect. Um, do you think if terms like gender queer or non-binary were around at the time, you would have identified as that? I know clearly who I am sexually. Um, I think I was talking more about uh, being a woman in a man's world and having a, a kind of... Uh, uh, aggression and um, drive that, you know, is usually more uh, equated with a man. At that time, I, I think, you know, times have changed. And sexism is something that you address in the book and being sexualized. Um, in the review, actually, of the book, the Washington Post originally went with the headline, in her memoir, Debbie Harry proves she's more than just a pretty blonde in tight trousers. Um, did you feel dismissed because of the way you looked? Oh, well, no, I mean, I'm in showbiz. <laughs> that's, that's what it's all about, you know? It's, uh, you know, being, uh, being chancy and sexy and, you know, uh, magnetic and, and all of these things, you know, this, this is, you know, what I'm good at. <laughs> You recently um, 
wished Cardi B happy birthday on Twitter. What did you make of her video, WAP, which is one of the biggest videos of the year, but also received some criticism? Oh, my God. It's it's so wild, but it's perfectly Cardi B. And uh, bless her, bless her wicked little heart. And uh, may she may she rule and reign forever. I said certified free. Seven days a week. Wet and gushy. Make that pullout game weak. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you dealing with some wet and gushy. Bring a bucket and a mop. Put this wet and gushy. Give me everything you got. Put this wet and gushy. There are some great stories, though, um, in the book Face It. Debbie, because you've have done so many things, um, like for example, when you were supporting Iggy Pop and David Bowie on their first tour, The Idiot, and David Bowie showed you his penis. What went through your mind? Well, that, I, I thought it was very nice penis. <laughs> and uh, there you go. <laughs> there doesn't seem to be much that shocks you. Well, thank God, you know, I mean, Rock and roll. I mean, what the hell? What am I supposed to be doing over here? Kissing babies and, you know, buying flowers for people. I, you know, I, I, I do buy flowers for, and I love babies. But, um, you know, we're supposed to have an edge. I wish that I had more of an edge. I wish that I had done web. How, how about that? There are um, also several traumatic events and accounts in the book, like you searching for your birth parents and the ex-boyfriend who stalked you and threatened you, and the close shave with a man that you believe to have been um, the serial killer Ted Bundy, and being robbed and sexually assaulted in your own home. Yeah. What was the most difficult um, thing to go back over when you're writing the book? Oh, you know, I, I, I tried to make the book exciting and a bit controversial and, and to sort of show to me what it's like to be me and to, you know, it, uh, weather some of the storms. I don't, I don't know, you know, what to say. I, you know, these are, uh, these are things that happened to me and, you know, I, I, they must've, I must've needed to, to put them in, in writing or to tell them, you know, some of, some of the stories I had told before, but having them in a collection like that, it certainly uh, made the book have a certain dark, <laughs> dark territory. You also write about um, New York in the late sixties um, in which drugs were part of your social life, part of the creative process, chic and fun and really just there. You talk about taking heroin. How would you describe your relationship with the drug? I just think it was part of the culture and, and definitely a part of uh, social life. Uh, I, uh, you know, it was part of my life for a while. And um, I think I don't really regret it, you know. I, I don't want to have a lot of regrets, you know, I, I like looking forward and, you know, I, I, if I have this uh, tremendous uh, cushion of <laughs> weirdness or experience behind me, you know, it, it makes me look ahead and think, ah, oh, you know, I, I am very, very excited about this upcoming tour and I really hope this happens. And I will do as much as I can to make it happen, uh, whether that means going on online and, and making uh, little videos. You know, maybe I'll do something about, you know, wearing a mask. And, you know, I've been wearing a mask for a long time, the mask of Blondie. So little me, the little me inside of Blondie, um, Debbie, you know, she's wearing this big Blondie mask. And all I can say is, you know, we all know that, you know, we put on a public face and sometimes we put on a, you know, a happy face or an angry face or whatever it is. But, you know, wearing a, a mask that, that protects the rest of humanity and your friends and your relatives, you know, from getting uh, sick, possibly dying from a virus is, uh, you know, it's a pretty nice thing when you come right down to it. There's also a lot of success in the book. Your debut album, Blondie, came out in 1976. And for years, you toured the world. You had number one hits, including Heart of Glass and Call Me. And by the time you'd sold 40 million records in the early 80s, things changed. Um, your partner and collaborator, Chris Stein, got ill. You discovered two years' worth of unpaid taxes, which, which meant that you lost your home. 
your car, even some of your clothes. You write about it in the book. And it meant the end of the band for a while. How are things for Blondie different after that? At that point, I, I sort of switched over and became Dirty Harry because I felt kind of funky. And uh, yeah, I guess we, you know, we all sort of had a chance to uh, reflect and to, you know, gather <clears throat> a clearer idea of, you know, a, a sense of values and, and the value of doing it and, and to having, uh, you know, reached, um, you know, reached a certain level of appreciation. And Debbie, you've outlived many of your friends um, and the New York characters in the book, like David Bowie, Warhol, Joey Ramone. How are you feeling about getting older? Well, basically it sucks, you know. I mean, um, basically I was going to I was going to write a song called Old, o, Old, O-L-D, as a four-letter word. And basically it is, because if you look at somebody and say, oh, they're old, um, you know, it, it is kind of, you know, it's detrimental, it's nasty. Um, getting old really, really does suck. You lose your abilities, your physical, your physical reality changes and you're not as carefree. You have to be more thoughtful and, um, you know, being young is a lot more fun. Let's put it that way. But, you know, I, I you know, I like fun. So I'm on the hunt. Watch out. I'm on the hunt. <laughs> I'm on the hunt for fun. I guess that's it. That's it. Debbie Harry, thank you so much. It's been a real pleasure to talk to you. Your book, Face It, is out in France now. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. Bye. It's been fun. Thank you. Thank you. You have enjoyed your program with Air France Protect promising you a pleasant trip with total peace of mind.